Today, we will be Viewmasters. And as Viewmasters, we will be looking into the landscape of the soul. We will be soul seeing. There is something about the human nature that relates very closely to sight and to seeing. <clears throat> sometimes we could think, sometimes we could feel, sometimes we can delve into the bottom of the soul's capacity to understand. But it seems as though we keep living in a domain of our beings that is very much connected to using the mind and using the intellect, which is both connected to thought. And then when we get tired of thinking and reasoning and understanding, we shift over to what we call the feeling part of ourselves. And so we begin to operate on the basis of feelings. But today, I would like us to go beyond the thinking, the reasoning, the understanding, even the feeling, and then to go into the seeing. So seeing the soul, seeing into being what is there inside of me. So this evening, I have chosen for you <clears throat> certain lens that we can look into and then we could see the landscape of our souls and we could see what is there within the landscape that is waiting to be seen by us. So we will be seeing ourselves into being things that perhaps we have not seen in ourselves before. But I'd like to start with the first lens. And the first lens that I would like us to look at or look through is the lens of light. And the lens of light is going to be a reflective lens. Actually, they're all reflective. But particularly, this opening lens, the lens of light, is going to be a reflective meditation. <clears throat> So I invite you to sit quietly and to focus, to focus your eyes on the center of your forehead. Now, what do I mean by that? Your physical eyes, of course, won't be able to turn around and look at your center of the forehead, but it can look outward, which it is looking, but have an inner awareness. So if you choose something of light, whether it is a candle, whether it is an electrical light, whether it is even just a point that you could visualize a point of light on a wall, that's also fine. But I'd like you to concentrate on light and concentrate on this light as a lens that you're looking at yourself through. Now, they say that there is a candle within the human form that is waiting to be rekindled. There is a candle in the human body that is waiting to be rekindled. And that candle or that flame is what we refer to as a metaphor used for the soul. So let us look through the lens of light and let us connect to this flame that is inside of this human body. Now, we know that the human body could be like the wax candle, but at the tip of that wax candle will be the flame once rekindled. 
And so the tip will be in the center of the forehead. And I'd like you to concentrate on the center of the forehead as the tip of that candle that you're now going to be rekindling through the lens of light. As I concentrate, on this ignited flame. The flame of the soul I see myself in my naked form. I see myself as an illuminated being. an illuminated being of living light. There is a stillness to this living light. There is a silence to this living light. The silence is almost like a still point A still point from which the flame is formed. I look deeply into this living light of I, the soul. And I can almost See the flame taking the form of an eye.
I can see. spiritual eye I can see with this subtle eye this eye of divine insight. My eye of divine insight is an eye that can see with a concentrated focus. It can see through the layers that's embedded in the soul. This eye of divine insight sees clearly It looks at the soul, at the self. From all sides round. From in and out. And from up and down. It is the eye that sees what is real and what is true. This is what I see. When I look through the eye of divine insight through the lens of light. I took you through that reflection because I wanted us to shift the way we see through our physical eyes to seeing with the eye of the soul, to see with that third eye that we call as divine insight. Now, one of the beautiful things on a spiritual path is that when one embarks on this path, one is able to see things one wasn't able to see before. And the things that we weren't able to see before are the things that are lying inside of us, the souls. And it becomes very difficult for us to be the people we want to be because we don't know 
what is lying inside of us. And at many times, we are afraid to look into and see what is it that's lying inside of us. A spiritual path is asking us to use this divine gift of insight. Insight means that I that can see the things and make meaning of certain things that are within me. And then to use that to uplift myself, to change myself, to become my authentic self. So today I will take you through four lens that I feel are very important for us to be looking at ourselves through, especially at this time that we have moved out of an old normal, we are in transition, and we are being told that there is going to be a new normal that we will collectively be creating in our world. That life as the old normal will not be the same because life will have a new normal to it. Now, in the external scenario, we really don't know what that new normal will be like. But what we do know is that when we are on a spiritual path and when we are looking for answers from the spiritual domain of our lives, perhaps we will be consciously co-creating this new normal. And the first thing I feel in being a co-creator of the new normal is to know exactly what I'm contributing to this new normal, is to know exactly how it is I can bring something that will contribute to a new normal that would perhaps lead us onto higher ground? Or how can I participate in this process that may be very uh, mysterious, very unknown? And how can I participate in a way that would help me to break through those doors, to break open those doors of fears and doubts and uncertainty. Because if I am participating in a process, perhaps there is a certain kind of spiritual strength, a spiritual capacity, a spiritual resilience that I'm bringing to help make things better. So the four lens, if you can see them, I have them here on a flip board, on the flip chart, they're there are four lens. One is the lens of love. One is the lens to flourish. The other is the lens of creativity. And the other is the lens of optimism. So I chose the lens of love first because I know from my experience with people, it's that there's a lot of things that are happening in which they are becoming very scared. They are becoming extremely anxious. What is going to happen? What is not going to happen? Will I be left as a victim of this COVID? Will I not be able to do the things that I was able to do before? Will I have a job? Will I? And so all of this, these fears go and settle in the hearts of people. And so it is as if they begin, because when one experiences anxiety, I think that anxiety creates a lot of palpitation in their hearts, in people's hearts. And the palpitation, of course, lead us to become shrunken people. We shrink. And so we are not able to even look to see what's going on inside of me. How can I see what is going on in my heart? And so the lens here is to look at certain things. So I have here to look at real love, to look at true love, and then to look at compassionate love. 
So the real love is how can I change the problems into solutions? How can I look inside of me, look inside of my heart, look and really see what it is that's going on in the domain of my feelings that are generating a lot of the problems? And how can I shift from the problems to the solutions? And uh, the, the thing is about when you have real love, it's a little bit of going back to oneself and learning how to do something we haven't um, perhaps um, you know, really learned in our life to do. And that is how do we love the self? How can I have real love for myself? Because real love is not to deny the problems that I'm facing. But real love is to look at what really is going on in my heart. But to look at what's going on in my heart through the lens of this divine insight. Because I know that on every side of a problem, the opposite side would be the solution. Now, it may not be a big solution that I can solve immediately. But I will have, looking at the reality of what's going on in my heart, I will know that the heart never lies to me. And that's why they say, if you want to know what is the truth, look into the mirror of your heart. So if there's a problem there, I have to give myself a little shift. And I have, they call it a twist. And I give the twist by saying, if the problem is here, then the solution must also be there. So rather than focus on the problem, let me use this real love to know that there is a solution to go with it. Now, that could be in very simple ways. Actually, it is in very simple ways that when I look at a problem, if I were just to lift my spirits a little bit and say, okay, the problem is here, but what is the solution? There must be a little bit that my heart will tell me to feel differently about it. And so it's not a solution of a plaster to fix it, but the solution is usually just to give your feelings a little shift and see that feeling Shifting that feeling is going to emerge into the beginnings of a solution. And so that's what I'm calling as looking at your heart with the lens of real love and seeing both sides and then look to see what emerges as a little bit that would take me into a domain of a solution. The other is true love. Sometimes we may be carrying stuff within ourselves in which we kept suppressing things and we never looked at them. We never looked at that which we are suppressing over time. And so there comes an upheaval and I'm left at home and I'm in social distancing and I am with the people, I suppose, if I'm with my family, the ones who have created these um, issues in my life that I had to suppress. And now I'm with them in an environment that is suddenly erupting these feelings inside of me that is telling me how broken my heart is, how much pain and hurt I'm carrying in my heart due to these relationships. So I call it as true love. Look into the heart that's been perhaps broken, that is carrying the hurt, that's carrying the pain, and is suddenly surfacing because we're in the same environment. Look at it with that lens of true love. Now, if I happen to be sharing space with people who have caused me to have hurt and pain, no matter how little or how big, then looking at the self with true love means don't project, don't blame accept responsibility. And I think that true love for myself 
in accepting the responsibility, not for what has been done to me, but to accept the responsibility that I felt it. So how now, what can I see inside of me that can transform that feeling, that can heal? Because this is a time that we have to heal. We have to heal out of the hurt and the pain. So how can I see what's inside of me? Because there is something inside of me that can heal my pain. How can I see it? Is it a little bit more of um, giving the benefit of the doubt to the other? They don't have they don't have the strength, so they weren't able to help me at the time I needed that help, and I took the sorrow or the pain from what I expected them to do, and they didn't do. Now, how do I change the frame? How do I change the lens? And I look inside of me to see. How can I help heal myself so I can help heal my world? So I have to start with myself. So to heal that broken heart, I have to see the strengths within me to do that. And I do have the capacity to do it. I just need to see it. And then the third is the compassion. Nowadays, especially people on the front line, they're having to help and help and help at very high risk. And so there is this thing that's called compassion fatigue that is occurring. And the compassion fatigue is because I'm not giving myself time to care for myself. I am constantly caring for others. So when I look through the lens of compassion for myself, what am I seeing that is required for me in this moment in time to have that loving kindness? What can I see inside of me, that little child inside of me that's calling out for compassion, for loving kindness? And what can I feed to that child that would bring it that nurturance and that kindness and that care? So this is the lens I'm asking you to have, the lens of love, but looking particularly at your heart. Look at what's going on in your heart. See it, feel it, transform it. That's the transformative power of love. But I have to see it first. I have to see what's going on before I could know what's going on, before I could think what's going on, before I could understand what's going on. The first level is seeing it through the lens of love. The other is the lens of creativity. Again, we are at home and we're looking for things to do. We may spend a lot of our time still at work, doing work, but sometimes because we're at home, we look for creative things to also do. Our children are at home. Uh, you know, we have to find things for them to do when they're not doing their long distance lessons. And so it brings out, rather than to get this shut down kind of feeling, it should allow us to soar with creativity, to do things that would bring a newness in our lives. I always see creativity as a form of newness in my life. So when I'm looking at my life through the lens of creativity, what is it that I'm seeing? So, you know, they all say that creativity starts with a specialty. And so these creative geniuses in the world are people who have a kind of a, a unique DNA, it seems, in their soul. And then that kind of flourishes and that kind of emerges out of them. And then they become like experts. They become geniuses at certain things, whether it's an invention, whether it is something that, um, you know, their creativity in music, their invention in terms of science, whatever it may be. But it is something that they were born with. Well, on a spiritual path, when we are looking at our souls through the lens of that divine insight, and we're looking at ourselves through the lens of creativity, what is it that I'm seeing? I'm seeing that deep within me is a specialty too. 
And that specialty is a unique gift that was given to me by God, by the divine source. And that is what I need to use in my life to be of service to humanity. So when I look through the lens of creativity at my soul, and I'm now going to identify that unique gift that I have, that I must now use to be of service to others, then it is important for me to see it. And when I see it, it means that I should also name it. And so creativity doesn't start from just being inspired or motivated by what's going on outside of me. But I think true creativity is to spend time in silence and to look through the lens of light, to connect to my uh, divine insight, and then to see what is it that time is calling out of me in order to serve others with. And this is called that specialty, that divine gift that God has given me. Now, I can't tell you what yours is, but what I'm asking you to do is to go into silence, to go into that contemplative silence, and then to discover this uniqueness about yourself. The other is when you discover this uniqueness, it's actually going to spark your participation in the new normal that we are all creating together because you are going to discover something inside of you and you are going to let what you have discovered inside of you to permeate. It will bring a newness to your life. It will be, bring a newness to the way you're seeing your present life and what you want to see in your future life. And so this unique gift, for instance, the unique gift may be that I need a lot of patience in my life. Unique gift could be being patient will allow others to be calm. And so if that unique gift within me is patience, to have the patience to let things happen at the pace they're happening, but at the same time to know that patience is virtue, that it is generating inside of me a kind of uh, a spirit to be of service to others, to be of service of those in my immediate uh, relationships, and to be, of course, in service whenever that need arises. It could be as simple as that, is having the virtue of patience as a gift given to me that is very important at this time of crisis in our world. And that patience within me will then permeate my whole life and my whole way of being. And then I will be able to see how this patience gets transmitted through my behavior, transmitted through my habits, transmitted through um, different things that may be causing frustrations in my life and give me a sense of stability. That is one way of building resilience. And so, but it's coming from something that I have within me that the world is now asking of me to use as a gift of service. The other lens is the lens to flourish. Now, the lens to flourish is a very beautiful lens because, you know, it's springtime and we were having this conversation that, you know, when it's spring and the flowers come out and there's newness in the air, new leaves, new flowers, new growth, new everything. And usually it's a time that we go out walking, we go out and we connect with nature and we go out and we admire the beauty of the flowers. And now in this social distancing, in being away, self-quarantine, in being away from nature as it's occurring, it's almost creating a sadness within. It's almost creating something like, um, you know, even the flowers are missing us because who is admiring them out there? Who is watching them with the pleasure and the joy 
that it brings to human life. And so this lens to flourish is an important lens, especially at this time of the year. I suppose it's, you know, it's a continual lens that we, lens that we would use, but particularly at this time of the year when we are in the springtime. So the lens to flourish is a lens that makes us see something in the soul. One thing that we have to understand about spirituality is that it is not a stagnant thing. It is very dynamic. There is something that is continually moving in the soul. And so to look at myself through the lens of to flourish means I'm looking at a continual cultivation that is taking place inside of me. So if I look at nature and say, well, now it's springtime, inside of the soul, it's also springtime. And so the cultivation of the, of the things that would be required by the soul to live in harmony with the season is very important for me to see. And so what is it that is being cultivated inside of me during the season of spring that I can give back? What is it that I'm seeing inside of me as a cultivation? What am I cultivating? Am I cultivating beauty? Am I cultivating the beautiful colors that are within me, the fragrance that's within me? Am I cultivating what is required of me to be nurtured at this time? Am I cleaning up the debris that's there within me from the winter? And am I allowing for new growth? What is being cultivated within me as I look through this lens to flourish? What do I want to flourish within me? And then of course, there, this eye, when I do that, what I'm seeing is that my eye is showing me my potential. Now, when we look at potential within ourselves, we would see that potential is something that we're not being, we're not using. But potential doesn't have to be huge and big things in life. Potential could be a drop. Potential could be a step. Potential could be just one little movement. And so when I'm looking at my inner potential, what is it that I want, you know, to move forward with? What is it I want to flourish with? What it is I want to open up myself with? And sometimes what my eye sees as a big barrier to my realizing even a step or a moment, or a drop of my potential is laziness or carelessness. Sometimes we become very lethargic. Sometimes we become very lazy. Sometimes we become very careless. And we just don't want to make the effort. We don't want to think that there is untapped potential within me that I am not using. But it just requires me to see you know, there's a lot more inside of me that I can use. And that one effort, that one seeing that there's something there that I'm not using allows me to have that one more breath, that deeper breath that can open up something inside of me that, you know, I can do something. I can do something more. I can feel something more for myself. I can have a more elevated thought about myself. And so my potential begins to grow. And so what happens when potential grows inside of me, my capacity grows. And one of the things about open it, opening up my potential and to allow my capacity to flow is that I will know how much inside of me I'm going to be guided by that which has opened up inside of me to reach out and to offer. Now, if I don't open up what's inside of me, then I will shut down. 
one of the things that I feel that can happen to us is that we can become very selfish. The situation in the world can lead us to become so selfish that it is almost as though it's survival of the fittest or, you know, it's winners and losers, those who die, those who live. But I think that when we open up our potential, we see this natural flow of life. And this natural flow of life that is coming out of me is going to connect to wanting that flow for others too. And it's just not going to stop at me. This is when I'm going to realize that the soul connects to souls. And if I, the soul, want to survive and to realize a potential inside of me and to see that the flow of my life is actually connecting to the flow of other people's lives and together we are creating relationships, then this I on myself, the I of wanting to flourish means that I will want the potential in others to flourish too. And so I will be touching within them that which will also make them rise and make them want to flourish too. Now, this is called flourishing in relationships. Because if I don't work on seeing this continual cultivation, this continual um, opportunities for me to build my potential and to allow for an inner growth of my capacity to reach out and touch others in meaningful ways. If I don't see that, then what would happen? I will withdraw and I will shut down and I will remove myself from others. And then I will end up in areas of great darkness. Now, we don't want that to happen. We want to flourish in ourselves and we want to flourish in our relationships. But I must see my potential. I must see my continual cultivation. And I must see how I can reach out and connect to others with this inner capacity of constant growth. And then the last lens that I want to share with you is the lens of optimism. Now you might say, you know, I'm choosing lens that is totally the opposite to what we're going through in the world. But sometimes I feel that, you know, when we are working on a spectrum and we are kind of going toward the, the spectrum of darkness, then it's good to jump to the other end of the spectrum and see what's the possibility there. You know, stretch. I always say stretch stretch the boundaries of our perceptions because we do have to look at life through different lens of perceptions. We do have to look at life with different meanings. And so this is why I chose lens of love, lens of creativity, lens of flourishing, and now lens of optimism. So by optimism, I mean that we need to look upward. It's like a view of hope. Optimism takes us, you know, upward. It's like an upward spiral. For me, the example of the lens of optimism is looking at the glass. Is it half empty or is it half full? Now, depending on how I'm seeing that glass, it depends on how I am looking at it, my perception of it. So if I see it as half empty, then my perception is one way. If I see it as half full, then my perception is quite different. So with the lens of optimism, how am I seeing the glass in my life today? And so one of the things is that for my own personal experience of this present time that we're living in, 
that my lens of optimism was at this time of uncertainty, how can I do my best? Can the time of uncertainty bring out the best in me? Now, what is the best in me? Can I do as much as I can right now? Whether it is to take the precautions that I'm asked to take, but if I look at the glass as half empty and I am taking the precautions, then I will be taking those precautions just to protect myself. But if I look at the glass as half full, then I, and I am having to take those precautions. Then I'm taking the precautions not just to protect myself, but to protect others. So I am doing it with a sense of optimism. I'm doing it with a sense that I'm doing something to help others as well. And so in that very little thing, it brought out the best, whatever that best was in that moment that I am doing something not just for myself, but I'm doing something to help others. So I think that this thing of can a moment of uncertainty bring out the best in me? Yes, it can. It can when I realize, when I see that my one little act is having an impact on a bigger collective. It's having a bigger impact than just self-survival. And so it's like a win-win situation. I win and others will win too because I'm contributing to something that is significant and I, it's bringing out the best. I'm rising in that action that I'm doing. So I'm seeing that kind of half full glass. The other is, you know, there are like right now two energies in our lives. One energy is taking us on a downward spiral and the other is taking us on an upward spiral. So in this downward spiral is that when something happens, there is an upheaval. How do I, what do I see, first of all, and we look at a lot of news that with a lot of different perspectives on what's happening. And so when I look at that news and then I'm left with the consequences of having looked at the news and that's left within me, and then I have to kind of make meaning, make sense of things that have been left within me. Because whatever has been left within me is going to trigger how I see life because I have been influenced. My way of seeing has been influenced by all the different scenarios, all the different things I've read about in terms of the upheaval in the world. And so I'm going to begin to see my world exactly like I have seen in the news or I have seen in terms of people's opinions or I have seen in terms of theories in the world. And so is that how I want to see my world? Is that how I want to see my world with an awareness that things are falling apart and everything is going on a downward spiral? So optimism, looking through the lens of optimism is a choice. It's like a choice point. What do I want? Do I want to engage myself in something that's taking me down? Or do I want to engage myself into something that's taking me up? Do I want to be on the upward spiral or do I want to be on a downward spiral? And I think most of us, the choice would be, I don't want to become a victim of what's going on, but I want to be someone that could be making a difference. And so, the upward spiral means that I have to look inside of myself and I have to connect to a strength that's within me 
And that strength within me is going to put me on an upward spiral. Now, this is where the meditation comes in, because if I don't connect to something higher, something that would, or someone that would move me up onto higher ground, that would take the soul and connect it to possibilities far beyond what is occurring in the world in its present state, then I wouldn't be able to be on an upward spiral. Now, the meditation or the connection to the divine being, to the source, to God, however we see this higher being, is what's going to do it for us. But how do I see that higher being? How do I see some source that is beyond all the confusion that is happening? And in seeing that source, how do I draw from the source the strength that would reinforce inside of me a spiritual enlightenment that would allow me to participate in a way that would put me onto an upward spiral. Now, you know, it has been said that thought is a system, that when the soul creates a thought, it is not the mind creating it. But when the soul creates a thought, that would put it on an upward spiral, because if thought creates a system, one system would be down, depending on the quality of that thought, would take me onto a downward spiral. But another quality of thought could take me up. And so if I, the soul thinks in a domain, if the soul sees itself as innately, intrinsically into its being, there's love, there's peace, that the soul itself, if it sees itself as the source of love, as the source of peace, as the source of joy, then the soul will be able to reconnect to that source within itself and to create a thought from that source of peace or that source of love. But in order to sustain the creation of that thought, the soul has to connect to a supreme being so that that thought could be sustained at the level of taking strength and power from that supreme being. And so can I see this? Can I see myself as a co-creator of thoughts that can connect me to an upward spiral? But the thought isn't just coming from my mind. The thought is coming from that which is intrinsic inside of me because my connection to the Supreme Being has allowed me to see it within me. And this is what's called divine insight. The eye of the soul can see things that the normal eye cannot see. And so my connection to God allows me to see myself as the source of the qualities that the world needs today. And that will take us onto this upward spiral. And finally, with optimism, it is that when I want to bring something, when I want to create something that would maybe assure me that I am doing that which is putting me on this upward spiral, it is important for me to visualize it because I may just be thinking about it and I may feel that this is something I want to do. But sometimes it is very important. And I think on a daily basis, we need to do this. We need to visualize that which I want more of. And in visualizing it, in really sitting, and this again calls for us to reflect, to contemplate, to meditate, 
to be in connection with the higher source. That in that remembrance of the higher source, in that connection with the higher source, if I could visualize what I want, I can bring it into being. And so this seeing into being, seeing across the landscape of the soul, seeing what the soul is capable of can only happen if I'm in the connection with the Supreme Being, in connection with the source. And that will draw, that strength that I will draw from the Supreme will allow me to visualize the things that are important in life, the things that I want more of, the things that will create a transformation both inside of me and outside of me and bring me that success. And so if you want something to happen, you first of all see it into being. Because if you could see it into being, it is then that you will believe in it. And if you could believe in it, you can become it. Om Shanti.